you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Life seems many searching for.
Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship on YouTube and Facebook Live this morning. We're so glad that you're here. If you are new or newer to the Y Church, we'd love to say hi. Um, just let us know that you're here and you can fill out the connection card in the link below and we would love to send you a gift just to say welcome. While online services are going to continue at 9.30 each week, weather permitting, of course, we will also plan to be outdoors at the Y each morning on Sundays in that large grassy area next to the pavilion. And as summer heats up, our thought is that meeting earlier in the morning would give us some cooler temperatures. We're going to continue with social distancing and also be wise about how we gather together. So please bring your own lawn chair and Bible and be ready for a great time of worship at 9.30 on Sundays at the Y. We want to continue to stay connected, whether you choose to worship online or outdoors. We're going to continue our online services at 9.30 as we continue to gather. You can always reach out for prayer. We want to connect with you. We want to be in prayer for you and your families, whatever's going on in your life. You can email prayer at the ychurch.org and we would be glad to pray with you. Also, at the end of the service today, uh, remember that prayer ministers will be available. So if there's any specific need that you have, just send us a message and your contact information and someone will be in touch with you shortly. Now today we are wrapping up our series, Double Portion, on Elisha and Elijah. And we're going to hear about how God worked through Elisha's life in 2 Kings today. Next week, we get to start a new series called Hope Rising. We get to dive into the book of 1 Peter, which is such a rich text. And so if you're looking for some scripture reading to do this week, I encourage you to jump into 1 Peter as we start our new series. Now, kids, I want to remind you and you and your parents and your grandparents about VBS this year. We are so excited to have the opportunity to partner with River of Life and Central Lutheran. We have around 150 kids signed up for this year's VBS, and that starts today. It's VBS in a box. You can pick up your box today from 3 to 5 in the Central Lutheran parking lot. We're going to have some fun things you can do with your families as you pull through the parking lot and get your box so you can be ready for VBS this week. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. We also have a fun way to support the kids and teenagers in our community by participating in the Great River Region Young Life Golf Tournament. It's happening on August 6th at the Elk River Golf Course. And this past year, we have been able to partner with Young Life and we have hosted Wildlife at the Y, had over 40 middle schoolers from the community involved on a monthly basis. And we are so excited about this way that we can support kids in our community. This year, Young Life also added a ministry called Capernaum, and that is designed specifically for students with special needs. And Barb Hinkle, our Y Church member, she took a new role on with the Walk With Me program and is working with that as putting kids with mentors together from Ivan Sand. The funds raised at the golf tournament are going to go directly towards helping support the ministry of Young Life, which includes Wildlife and Capernaum and Walk With Me. All kinds of awesome things happen. We also want to support our black and brown neighbors in our community. Um, and we have the opportunity to grow in our understanding of, through conversation with one another. And what is going on in our country regarding racial reconciliation is a vital part of what Jesus calls his followers to engage in. We hope that you will join the conversation that we are calling Listen and Learn, conversations about race and the church. And those will start for adults on Zoom on July 21st, that's a Tuesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. And July 22nd, our high schoolers will meet at the Tiki House for a few hours to hang out and have some conversation around this topic as well. There will be some reading involved and the discussion will be led by Grace Tiki, who is a student at Biola University and is home with her family, who is part of our Y Church family this summer. If you have any questions or you would like to sign up, please email info at the ychurch.org. You also find a link online to sign up. We will be in touch with more information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We would love to have you join us for these important conversations. 
Briefly, I just want to mention that you can utilize a few different giving options. We are so grateful for God's provision through your gifts each week to carry out our mission of seeking Jesus, connecting with others, and sharing his love can set up giving at thychurch.org slash egiving, or you can use our mobile giving option by texting YGIVE to 77977. Finally, you can uh, just mail in your checks as well to the address below. Now let's join Ashley as we worship the Lord through song together. Um, don't, don't be hesitant, just wherever you are, just use your voice to give God praise this morning. And then after that, we get to hear from the Beginner Bible Story, read for us this morning by Mariah Jones. Let's sing together. We can't wait to see you in person soon. So this song, this first song is Forever Rain. We've done this one before, so I just invite you wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, feel free to follow along. You are good. Peace. 
God, that is so true. And today we just say, we just declare wherever we are that we are running right into your arms. God, you live within us. When Jesus left this earth, he promised that the Holy Spirit is in us. And so we just rejoice in that and we look to you for everything. We praise you and we thank you that you are a good, good God and that you do forever reign in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This next song, Be Thou My Vision, uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, when was the last time you used the word thou in a sentence? I think sometimes we can get caught up in the old language of this song, but it is a beautiful old hymn. And my interpretation of this hymn is that when we see things through the eyes of Jesus, when we allow Jesus to be our vision, the Holy Spirit, um, we make different decisions, whether it's posting something on social media or talking to a friend or responding to our spouse when we're upset. If we can filter those things through the Spirit of God, our responses will be much more Christ-like. So as we sing this song, let's just ask the Holy Spirit to filter our thoughts, our words, and our actions through, through God. become his slaves. 
Elijah asked her, do you want anything? She said, I have a little oil. Elijah said, gather some empty jars from your friends, then go inside and pour your oil into them. The woman obeyed and God made her tiny bit of oil fill all the jars. She sold all the oil and paid the man back. She took care of her family with the leftover money. That is it. Hi, good morning, everybody. Mariah, great to have you reading our Beginner's Bible. Awesome to hear you do that. Well done. Uh, we're going to share a kid's blessing next, and uh, that's going to come this month from Psalm 23. And so you'll see in just a moment, those words will appear, and you can um, speak them out loud with me where you get to the blank line in the first sentence. Just drop in a name or names of kids or anybody who you'd like to bless this morning. Uh, let's share in that kid's blessing together. The Lord is your shepherd. You don't need to fear because he is with you and will comfort you. Amen. That's our July kids blessing. And since it's July, I just felt like I had so much fun um, preaching outside uh, in on the back deck last week. I thought I'd try it again. So here I am by this little pine tree in our backyard. Um, and we're going to do our table question next and just give us a chance to dialogue about this at home. Uh, wherever this finds you, we can always use that Facebook comments section too to interact there. The question I have for you is, have you ever missed seeing something that was right in front of you? Have you ever missed seeing something? Maybe you're looking for something in your house and then it ended up being right in front of your eyes. Uh, tell those stories if you would, and then we'll hear our scripture reading this week from Carol Bolter. Good morning, Y Church. Our reading for today is out of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 8 through 18. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Aramans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elijah warned the king, 
so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers. But Elijah, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go, find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. As the enemy came down toward him, Elijah prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness, blindness as Elijah had asked. Well, thanks, Carol, for reading scripture for us this morning. Uh, some of you who are listening have this exact same story as I do. This is uh, my version of it. I was in seminary. I was in my mid-20s, and I started to have headaches. And so I, I would come home from class, and I'd have headaches. I would have to stop typing on my computer because of headaches or put down my reading. And so I finally started to go down the usual list of suspects, to figure out what, what is the culprit behind this. And of course, one of the things that they recommended was I should go get my eyes checked. So I did that. I went to the eye doctor and it turns out I really needed glasses. I was nearsighted and I didn't even know it. And it was in fact, eye strain that was causing those headaches. So I was at the eye doctor and, and uh, ordered up some glasses, came a few days later when the lenses came in, put them on, and I will never forget the car ride home because I could not believe how detailed and clear everything was as I drove down the street. I mean, it kind of made me nervous that I'd been driving for so long without glasses because now I remember seeing these towering trees that were uh, along the street and I could see the individual leaves on the branches and, and I'd never seen them before. I wasn't aware of how much I had been missing before I finally got my vision checked. In today's scripture passage, 2 Kings 6, we're gonna talk about spiritual vision and the headaches and heartaches that, that we can experience when we don't see clearly. Uh, it was the, the 16th century reformer, John Calvin, who liked to use this metaphor when he talked about the spectacles of faith, putting on the, the eyeglasses, the spectacles of faith, and in today, in our scripture reading, we're looking at a story that is really about checking your vision or the eyesight of your faith. And frankly, I don't think it could come at a better time than right now. We started off this year, you might remember, under the theme 2020 vision. And we had no clue, did we, in January, what this year would hold. Um, and here we are now in the middle of 2020, and life is looking very different than what we would have ever expected. Um, but maybe I think also unrelated to the pandemic, in what ways, I'd like to ask you this morning, is your spiritual vision being tested right now? What might God want you to see that you have been missing? It's our last Sunday in our series on Elijah and Elisha called A Double Portion. And I have loved our time in scripture with these big and small stories from the lives of these two prophets. Even the names have been significant. Elijah means my God is Yahweh. 
Yahweh being the personal name of God in the Old Testament. And yes, this is a summer where, where I invite you to be saying, my God is Yahweh. My God is the Lord. And then Elisha. Elisha's name means my God saves in Hebrew. And it's like he's pointing us toward Jesus, whose name also means God saves, just in Greek. And I hope this is a summer where you are bending your knee before Jesus saying, yes, my God saves and he has saved me. Today we get this one last glimpse of the saving power of God if we have the eyes to see it in the story we're going to look at in 2 Kings 6. Um, and just like last week, we are once again dealing with the nation of Aram as we get into the story. So I have 2 Kings 6 in front of you as we take a look at it. Uh, these Arameans, they have not gone away just yet. Aram was a country, we said last week, northeast of Israel, a place that we would now call Syria. And off and on in this part of their history, Arameans would cause major problems for Israel. Now, at this point in Israel's own history, uh, things aren't looking very good. They are far away from the Lord. They're not keeping their covenant relationship with God. Uh, they're worshiping false gods. They're spiritually and morally bankrupt in the land. Injustice and immorality are pretty standard. But in that whole mix, there is this faithful remnant of God's people who continue to follow Yahweh. And one of them is the prophet Elisha. The story today starts with this lopsided chess match of sorts that is playing out between Israel and Aram. Aram had declared war on Israel yet again, but every time the king of Aram would position his troops for attack, Elisha would tip off the king of Israel, give away their location. And this would happen again and again. All the king of Aram knows is that someone somewhere is giving away his every move. And, and he finally concludes that it must be an inside job. It must be one of his own men. And he's so enraged by this that he calls his officers together and he demands to know who it is. And he says to them, who's the mole? Who's the, the traitor? Who's the informant? And one of the officers says then in, in verse 12 says, none of us, my Lord, the king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words that you speak in your bedroom. I think that's just a great phrase, isn't it? You know, we, we could say the very words you text to your best friend or the very words that you write in your journal. King of Aram, the very words you whisper in the dark, uh, Elisha has the intel on all of it. It, it almost feels like a ancient wiretapping is going on, but but that's not it. There's no tricks or espionage here. It is just the supernatural work of God as he chooses to speak these things to Elisha. So the king, upon hearing this from one of his officers, says, well, go and find him so I can send my men and capture him. You know, the, the irony of which is that is the very problem to begin with. Elisha always knows where the king is moving his men. But off the men go, and then they eventually send back their report. They've discovered Elisha is in Dothan. So the king springs into action. Verse 14 says, Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. And I just try to imagine this scene and, and try to imagine how many thousands of soldiers this must have been just because of one man, Elisha. The Aramean army is surrounding the entire city of Dothan. And that's where we're at when the sun begins to rise that next morning. Now there's a servant of Elisha who is up early that morning. And uh, it says in the text, he got up and went out. So maybe he um, stepped outside the city gates. Maybe he was going for water or something like that. And he is the one who all of a sudden sees all of these soldiers and war horses and chariots surrounding the city and he races back to Elisha and he says in verse 15 oh no my lord what shall we do and there is something about that line that just sounds so familiar doesn't it 
How many times have you and I been in a situation where our eyes get big and fear sets in and you have said, oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? Some of you, in fact, might find yourselves in that situation right now. You know, you woke up one day like the servant in this story. The sun was coming up like any other day, but then disaster struck. I mean, you'd stepped into your daily routine, but had no idea what was coming down the pike just later that day. The loss of a job, a medical diagnosis, an accident, an unfaithful spouse, the death of a loved one, moving schools, the arrival of a dangerous virus. Whatever it is that you would name, some of you I know are facing something right now that is deeply unsettling in your life. There is something encamped around you that instills your life with fear and uncertainty in every corner. My wife and I, years ago, went to a standard ultrasound appointment one day. It was a normal day. The sun came up just like any other day. But when we saw that ultrasound tech hurry off to go get the doctor, we knew that something was wrong. The doctor came in and told us the news that our twin daughters in utero had this transfusion syndrome that would result in the death or one of one or both twins in 90% of all cases unless there were drastic surgical measures pursued. And even with the surgery, the odds were still not in our favor that both girls would live. And we went home that day and crawled into bed and just cried together. Some of you know that feeling when you feel absolutely helpless and you have lost almost all hope. Some of you know exactly what this servant was feeling when he cries out in despair, Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? And here in the story is how Elisha responds. Verse 16, he says, Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now I want you to put yourselves in uh, the servant's shoes. And just to think about how ridiculous this would have sounded. The, the servant saw with his own eyes that the thousands of Aramean troops who were there. Rows and rows of horses and chariots surrounding the city. When Elisha says this, I mean the servant has to think he has, he has lost connection with all reason and reality. He's done the math. He was out there and he's thinking, Elisha, it's just you and me and the kind citizens of Dothan against this whole Aramean army. But Elisha was seeing what the servant was not, the spiritual reality of the situation. The servant needed his vision checked, and that's exactly what Elisha prays for. And I love that detail at the start of verse 17. Don't miss that when he says, the text says, and Elisha prayed, and Elisha prayed. This isn't a matter of mustering up the extra faith that's required or, or just believing harder. But no, this is something that only God can do. Elisha didn't tell his servant just to snap out of it and open his eyes. No, he goes to the Lord and asks him for the vision to see. And this, my brothers and sisters, is how faith is increased when we simply ask for it. Verse 17 says, And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Does God protect his children? Yes, he does. And sometimes we wonder about that, don't we? You might be wondering about that right now. Uh, will God protect me and my family? Will he provide for us? Will he deliver me from what I'm facing right now? But even when this world throws its biggest punches, the Bible says that the Lord is our keeper and that we are never out of his grip. And I wonder if Elisha thought of Psalm 27 that day when it says, 
Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. There is reason, even now, for you to remain confident in the Lord. And there is reason, even now, to remain confident when you are surrounded in Dothan. You see, this is a place that has come up before in the Bible. It, only once before. It's only mentioned twice. But the first time would take us back to Genesis 37. Dothan was the place where Joseph's brothers attacked him, threw him in a cistern, and then sold him into slavery. You might remember the story. Uh, this is where they staged Joseph's murder. It happened in Dothan. And what happened there that first time was, was terrible. I mean, Joseph probably wondered if God had left him. He probably cried out from the pit like the servant in our story. Oh, no, my Lord. What shall we do? Surrounded by cistern walls, surrounded by murderous men, it seemed, it seemed hopeless, like God had abandoned Joseph. But he was actually working on a story that was far greater and grander than any of them could have ever imagined. The Lord did deliver Joseph in Dothan that day, but not in the way that he would have expected. But as we look at the whole story, we see it is precisely because Joseph was sold into slavery that there came the day many years later that Joseph was able to save his whole family from starvation. He said to his brothers in Egypt that day, this is in Genesis 50, he said, what you intended for evil, God intended for good in order to accomplish a day like this and preserve the lives of many people. You see, God sees the bigger picture. Even now, when you're surrounded in Dothan, he is writing a bigger story and his plans for you are good. They're good. The spectacles of faith Help us to see and trust what the Lord is doing beyond what the physical eye can see. I want to finish today by telling you about one of the people who I think so clearly illustrates this kind of vision check that we're talking about today. His name was George Mueller. Uh, he was born in Germany in 1805, but spent most of his adult life in Bristol, England. George did not grow up following Jesus. I think it's an important part of his story to note. Uh, actually, he, he was a lot more like wayward Israel in 2 Kings. By his own account, he describes himself as uh, a liar and a thief. His mother died when he was 14, but instead of being bedside with her, he was out roaming the streets with his buddies, half intoxicated. He ended up in jail at the age of 16 for stealing. His dad did come and bail him out, uh, but took him home and beat him. Neither George nor his dad had a spiritual bone in their body. That's what George describes of his childhood and his teen years. But God had not given up on George. And if you're a young person and you feel like in your life you have made some, some rough choices and, and have some regrets, I want you to know that God has not given up on you either. And it was at the age of 20 that someone invited George to go to a Bible study and by some miracle, by the grace of God, he decided to go. And that evening changed the whole course of George's life. He later said, it was to me as if I had found something after which I had been seeking all my life long. George Mueller eventually became a pastor. He founded schools, supported missionaries. They distributed Bibles and books. But the thing that he probably became most well known for was his care for orphans. He built five Christian orphanages and cared for 10,024 individual orphans in his lifetime. There was an occasion where there were 300 children at one of those orphanages who were up one morning and ready for school, but the orphanage had run completely out of food. In fact, there wasn't even anything to drink. This is uh, 19th century England and uh, a very rough time in history in that part of the world. And, and the cupboards had simply run out. And there are 300 hungry kids waiting to eat and go to school. And George Mueller walked into the cafeteria that morning, all the kids standing at attention. 
And he said, well, we know we need to get to school on time, so let's pray. And he prayed a simple prayer saying, Father, we thank you for what you are going to do to give us something to eat. And no sooner had he said amen, than there came a knock at the door. And it was one of the local bakers there in Bristol. And he said, excuse me, Mr. Mueller, uh, I, I couldn't sleep last night. I just felt somehow the Lord was trying to tell me that you and the children would be needing bread today. So I got up at 2 a.m. and I've been baking since then. And, and I've brought you all of this bread to eat. And in came the whole load of bread. No sooner had, the, that would be amazing enough, but no sooner had the baker left when a knock on the door comes again and it's a milkman. This is back in time in history when there was actually an, a milkman. And he says, um, excuse me, I, I was delivering milk and my wagon broke down right outside the orphanage here. And I'm just wondering if I could offload all of my milk to you here. You can use it so I can empty my wagon and get it repaired. It's just an amazing story. George Mueller came to be known for his profound faith and his simple prayers. And so I close with this final story from his first trip to North America. Actually, he preached in Minneapolis in 1880. And, and it was in 1877 that George was on his way over to North America on a ship called the Sardian. It was headed from England to Quebec. Uh, but off the co coast of Newfoundland, they came into this incredibly thick fog that basically brought the ship to a standstill. And the captain of the ship was out on the bridge for 24 hours straight trying to figure out what to do. And that captain is actually the one who reported this story and says that what happened next changed his life. A man, a passenger named George Mueller, came up onto the bridge and said to him, Captain, I've come to tell you I must be in Quebec by Saturday afternoon. The captain looked at, at George and said, that's impossible now. And George said to him, well, very well. Uh, if your ship cannot take me, then God will find some other way. And then he said to him, why don't we go down to the chart room and pray? The captain thought that this guy was completely crazy, but he follows George to the chart room and he's saying to him, Mr. Mueller, do you know how dense this fog is? And listen to what George said. He said, no, my eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. And with that, George Mueller got down on his knees and prayed a simple prayer. And as soon as he'd said amen, the captain walked across the room, opened the door, and the fog was gone. What are your eyes seeing these days? The density of the fog or the destination where God is taking you? The army that is surrounding the city or the hills that are full of God's horses and chariots? There's an invitation for you and I today to put on the spectacles of faith, to see what you have maybe been missing and to trust more fully in the God who loves you and defends you. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord God, we thank you in advance for what you will give to us today. Uh, we want to pray simply and boldly that you, Lord, would open our eyes, that we would not fear whatever has surrounded us in this season of our life, but that we would see you and your heavenly army encamped around us. You and you alone are our protector, our defender, and our redeemer. And Lord, the life that you have given to us, we want to live for you, for your glory, and in your name we pray. Amen. Ashley's going to lead us in one last song, a very fitting song uh, for this story. And then I'll be back to close out our worship service. This song is Open the Eyes of My Heart. 
helps to have your pick. <laughs> You know, if you are new to prayer or you just kind of makes you nervous or you're not sure what to say, um, the disciples asked Jesus at one point in the Gospels, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. You know, fishermen, a tax collector, just a ragtag group. And, and so Jesus taught them this prayer that we're about to pray, the Lord's Prayer. And uh, I just encourage you to, to find voice in these words. Um, a simple kind of prayer. I think that George Mueller too would have prayed often in his day. And so together with the church in all of Elk River, in this country and around the world, we join our voices today in praying this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me in my backyard this morning and to all those who helped make our worship service happen online. Uh, it just really is a, a joyful thing to be together this way. Uh, as you know, from here on out, the second half of summer, we'll continue to have this online worship service at 930. And then we have an outdoor worship option that will be also at 930 at the Elk River Y on the South Lawn. And so you can engage our worship gatherings either here or there in whatever way you feel comfortable as you ebb and flow through this summer and a challenging time together. But as we go, I want you to know we'd love to pray for you. You can email prayer at the ychurch.org 
or you can uh, just direct message us on our Facebook page. Uh, we have prayer ministers even now who would love to give you a call and pray with you. So just leave your name and number and we'll be in touch in a matter of minutes. Uh, just know that you are deeply loved by your heavenly father this week as you step into a new week, uh, asking him to open your eyes and give you those spectacles of faith to see what he's doing all around you. Um, blessings. And I also want to leave you with this blessing. I almost forgot it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and may he give you his peace. And all God's people said, amen. Have a great week. We'll see you again next Sunday.